you are here for a reason today, Lisa. Normally, you're here after the AW pay-per-views, but mm-hmm. uh, we had we had Vince-related news going on, and uh, we we decided that this would be a good day for you to be on. And you asked. I don't want to make light of this, but I I can hardly contain myself. Is swearing allowed on this show? Okay. Well, we're talking about this motherfucker, and there's no limit to the amount of swearing that you're allowed to do on this program when talking really about any situation, but particularly this one. So feel free. That's encouraged. Yes. If you don't want to hear this kind of language, then uh, just turn off the show. Be creative. Yeah, or skip forward. Invent new words. It's all fine. Yeah, but we're, we're not noobs here. So uh, go ahead and unleash. What would you like to say about uh, this situation here? Where to begin? Um, where I mean, where do you start with this? Um, oh God! I mean, I t- okay. I want to start off by saying I'm not here to kink shame anybody. Okay, it's like whatever you're into, it's fine. You know, you want to be into coprophilia, you you go for it. You want to be into golden showers, you go for it. Whatever. I you know, we're all grown ups here. As long as everybody. Well, is I would argue adult. that, but go ahead. Okay. <laughs> as long as everybody's an adult, as long as everybody is, you know, consenting and everybody can give informed consent. And I think the issue here is around informed consent and about whether or not you actually can consent to this. And I think part of why I wanted to kind of talk today is that I'm looking, like we all are, I'm looking at this, I'm reading what's going on online and I'm reading reactions. And I think hearteningly most of the reactions have been exactly the same as what we have all thought, that this is like beyond. I think you said it was like reading a horror movie. Was that right? Yeah, it was like reading a horror novel. That's it. Or like a a script for a a horror film. But you just, I'll I'll put it this way. It's like reading a a book about uh, true crime where you know how it's going to end, but as you're reading it, there's like just an, an ongoing sense of dread as as each piece of the story gets told. You're like, oh, my God. And it just it keeps getting worse throughout the story. I, it's horrific. And I think I mean, it came out, obviously. I mean, obviously, Brian, I emailed you and said, did you have any clue it was this terrible? And you just emailed back. No, I did no. not. And. It, we've all heard things about Vince and we've all heard, oh, you know, th- uh, stories and they're just stories, stories about casting couch, whatever. I don't think any of us had any idea it was like this. Um, and what I wanted to say, I wanted to address things that have been said online about, well, she she could have left. She took presents from him. She took gifts. You know, she took money. She could have walked out any time. And I think these people saying this need to understand uh, coercive control. And co- I don't know what the law is like in America, but in the UK, coercive control is illegal. And um, it's a lot of what gets brought up in domestic violence situations, in divorces around domestic violence, where one partner is unevenly able to control the other partners. And um, I think that apply- that very much applies here. However, and I think I think Dave has made this point, and I think Dave was very unfairly criticised on uh, Twitter and various other places this weekend. Um, if you strip away everything in the article, you strip away everything in that lawsuit except the text messages, say everything else is fake, and I don't believe it is for a second, but just say it was, say everything else was fake, and the text message is the only thing that's real, and people saying text message can be fabricated. Text messages can be verified. It's very easy to verify a text message. Incredibly easy to verify a text message. Um, if you've ever, any any point, looked into any true crime story whatsoever, you can go to a mobile phone operator and get printouts of text messages that are sent between phones. It's very easy to do, and the police can do that, and other people can get access to that too. So I think that it would be very, very stupid of anybody to put fake text messages into a lawsuit. So let's assume those text messages are real. There's enough in there. There's more than enough in there without even corroborating anything. There's enough in there to say that he acted completely inappropriately as the head of a company with a young girl who was in his employee, who he gave a job to, who was in a very, very vulnerable situation in her life. And he, he has to be gone. Obviously, John Laurinaitis is gone. There has to be an investigation. There has to be a completely open and transparent investigation in WWE. It's no good Paul saying, oh, I don't have any knowledge of this. I'm sorry. Bullshit. Bollocks. 
this guy is on the fucking board. I'm sorry, he was on the board. There's supposed to have been an investigation. Just, they just think we're fucking stupid. And, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, it's just so... It frustrates me because this is a sport that we all love. We love professional wrestling. Professional wrestling is fucking awesome, and we love it. And this cunt has taken it and made it into something disgusting and dirty. And people outside the industry are now looking at us and thinking this is what professional wrestling is. It's all over the BBC. It's all over the Guardian. It's on the Times. It's on the Daily Mail. I mean, for Christ's sake, it's everywhere. And people that I'm friends with who don't watch wrestling are coming to me and going, oh, is this this thing you like? Is this this thing you support? And, you know, we've been around wrestling for years. There are good people in WWE. There are fucking good wrestlers in WWE. There are good people behind the scenes and everybody is being tainted with this. And I'm really fucked off because I fucking love wrestling. And this is shit all over it, if you pardon the pun. And I don't mean that to be funny. And Jesus Christ, something needs to be done to clean this up because this is not what I want people to be thinking about when they look at our sport and how wonderful and awesome our sport is. Sorry. Well, Very I will much. I will <laughs> say that when you, when you asked me, did you know anything about this? I said no. And then you mentioned, you know, everybody's heard stories about Vince. And I think that a very important aspect of this story is, yes, everybody's heard a lot of stories about Vince. Everybody's heard a lot of stories about John Laurinaitis. Everybody's heard a lot of stories about other people. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, everybody's heard stories. And, you know, well, have you heard about so-and-so and so-and-so -and -so or this and that? And I talk to a lot of people. And I do want to say that, you know, when it comes to, and I've heard a lot of this, well, you know, this whole company needs to go down. Everybody, every, listen, I don't know who knew, who knew what, okay? But I didn't talk to one single person when they, when they read that lawsuit and the text message and everything who said anything like, oh, you didn't know that? <laughs> Nobody said that, okay? Even... She even claimed, okay, that Vince, like, was went out of his way to, like, make it very clear, you know, nobody nobody needs to know anything about this. Don't talk about this. You know, he kept bringing up his, his lawyer. And, yes, it is true, okay? It is true that in the text messages, he talked about how, you know, I took these pictures. I showed it to everybody on the production crew. There was a dozen guys, and he's telling all these stories. And maybe that's true. Okay, maybe that's true. He also might be completely full of shit, okay? Yeah. Because I know people that work in WWE production, and they didn't know anything about this. And I'm not saying that, like, you know, I know I don't know everybody. In fact, I don't know most of the people in WWE production. But, you know, I think that, uh, you know, if you... Guys like Vince and John Laurinaitis that do stuff like this, I mean... They, you know, they go out of their way to try to, you know, keep it quiet. And do I think for one second that Triple H, for example, didn't know that Vince had other women or maybe, you know, hey, did you hear that, uh, you know, Vince was in the office late last night? I don't believe for a second, okay, that he didn't know stuff like that and probably many others as well. But the degree of what Vince was doing and John Laurinaitis was doing, I don't think a lot of people had any idea the extent of any of this. Because, like I said, no, and I, I hear from all sorts of things from all sorts of people, and I have for years, and I didn't hear one person that goes, oh, yeah, that was common knowledge, the whole, nothing. Nobody said that. People were shocked at what came out in that, that legal filing. So, yeah, I, I think there's a good chance there are other people in WWE that need to be axed, you know, but do I think it's like the whole company, everybody there? No, I don't. I, you know, there's 500, 700 employees or something like that. I mean, you know, there, there are wrestlers there that don't even know what they're going to do next week. So, I mean, I don't want to sound like I'm defending, you know, people, but I think that some people are being painted unfairly here. You know, a lot of people, the idea that everybody knew this and everybody's responsible and there's this horrible culture. I mean, there's a lot of good people that work there. And there's a couple complete assholes. Some of them are gone, thank God. And there may be others 
but uh, you know the the main names that we heard about things happening over the years, but we didn't know what. Just that you know this person, you know Bill Demott. I don't know the extent of what Bill Demott did, but a lot of people complained about Bill Demott. You know, I didn't know the the extent of of everything with John Laurinaitis, but I'd heard stories about John Laurinaitis and and Vince, but nothing like this. This was all like, I think most everybody was shocked at the degree of of what happened here yeah and i think also it needs to be said that there may okay there may have been people who had some inkling something was going on but how many of them were actually in a position to do anything at all about it it's a culture of fear fear you propagate a culture of fear and you do it on purpose so you can get away with shit like this because if people are afraid of you and people are afraid for their livelihoods, for their families, for their careers. They think they'll be blackballed for the rest of their lives. And I don't I don't blame those people for not saying anything because number one, I'm sure I doubt they knew anything like the scale of what was going on or is alleged to have gone on. And I think that those people who who are they gonna tell? Who are they gonna talk to? My Concern is with the organization. My concern is with the people at the top. That's where my concern lies, those people. If Vince is showing sexy pictures around of a woman to guys in production, and I might, I mean, I obviously work more on production side. I'm a script writer, that's my trade. I know a lot of people in production. I know some people in production at WWE, not everyone and not many, but some. I don't believe for a second those guys could do anything about it. I, I, what are they going to do? You know, the most they can do is leave. And then you're out of a job and you're probably not going to get a reference and then your family doesn't eat and rada, rada, rada. Um, I, that's how you foster a culture of fear. And we've seen it in other organizations. We've seen it in other places. We've seen it in my industry many times. I mean, in the UK, there was the Jimmy Savile case, which was very, um, I've talked about it on other podcasts in reference to things in wrestling. And that was a very well-known case, but it's happened obviously with Weinstein and people like that as well, and Cosby. Um, people fear for their jobs, their careers. And I don't think it's fair to pinpoint. And as you say, we've all heard stories and there's always nudge, nudge, wink, wink. I was told many, many years ago when I was first in wrestling and, you know, WWE were looking around the UK at people. And I was told very nudge, nudge by a, a wrestler who worked for WWE. Oh, well, you know, if you go over there, never be alone with Vince. And it's like, well, you hear that about guys and it's just, OK, whatever. None of us could have known. I think what was going on and my concern more is now where do we go from here and triple h and I, you know sitting in a press conference and saying oh i don't know about that anyway wasn't this an awesome week for wwe no it wasn't it was a fucking nightmare it was fucking awful it's the worst thing you could have possibly said how are you not briefed better you were a multi-billion dollar company how have you not been briefed before you've gone out in front of people I mean, Jesus Christ, what what is going on there and how how is how do they fix this? How do they fix this? What do they do? Well, I think that the, the next question, obviously, is are there going to be any criminal charges filed? I mean, I think one of the things with Vince that we have learned over the years with his multiple N NDAs is that dude's got a lot of money and he figures, well, you know, I'll do whatever and then I'll just pay it off and move on to whatever's next. And I think there should obviously, especially when you read this particular filing, uh, there should obviously be probably some legal ramifications, I would think. But, uh, I mean, it should be more than just, hey, you're not with this company anymore. But you still have your billions of dollars and everything else. Vinny, you have any thoughts on this? I mean, I don't know what to add that's not obvious. And doesn't, doesn't you were dreading me going to you, weren't you? I mean, a little bit. I knew, I, I, no, I knew it was coming eventually. So, yeah, I mean, <sighs> first of all, I want to know if Janelle Grant had been in that room, would Triple H have told her to focus on the positives? Probably not. Okay, just curious about that. And the other thing I keep going back to, this is going to sound like I am making a joke. I am not making a joke. There's just nothing funny about this at all. This is a dude who thinks sneezing is gross. That's true. Which means he knew exactly what he was doing and how terrible it was. And what it was doing to other people. And uh, got off on it. That's awful. And like I say, I don't have anything to add that's not like self-explanatory and obvious on his face. Fuck that guy. Fuck a lot of people. Exactly who is going to be fucked and how much they'd be fucked as we determined. But uh, yeah, it all sucks. 
I mean, I think you're right, Vinny. This isn't a necessary. I mean, we've all got hung up on the sex part of it because that's the bit that's like a front and center. It's not about sex. This is about power. It's about, it's about power it's about and consent. Way. That's the issue. Uh, yeah. you, we've all, I mean, he, Vince himself has said for years that he's fooled around and chased anything in a skirt with the exact words he used to Playboy magazine one time. It's, it's not, not a secret. But as long as, you know, we, we, at least I, maybe I'm naive, I assumed all the women were happy to go along with it. And thus, that was their business and his and Linda's and their business, not mine. Uh, and this, you know, changes everything. And, and, uh, you know, I, I, I figured likely over the years there have been some who've been uh, persuaded to make a decision they later regret, but it's still their decision. And and the details of this are things like criminals would find most of this shocking. It's just, it's it's unimaginable. It's it's it's. I'll tell you what's unimaginable. This is one of multiple NDAs. Yes. One of multiple. Oh, sure. This is not the only time this is happened. It's not like we know the contents of like two other NDAs, yeah. and the other two were tame, and this one was outrageous. We only know one, and it was this one. Yeah. yeah. So what are the stories in these other NDAs? I'm hoping that it will, in fact. You know, one of the things Dave was talking about was, um, you know, uh, 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 an NDA involving, uh, I think it was an NDA involving sexual abuse won't stand up in court, but only if it's post-2022. Which is, like, completely fucking ridiculous. Like, yeah. well, if it was 2021, like, eh, hey, you know, but... I mean, this should be obviously retroactive. But, you know, what... Uh, how many NDAs uh, may uh, be deemed, uh, you know, illegal? And how many people will be... Uh, or could come forward and tell their story, which could be as bad or worse? Yeah. We yeah. don't know. And Isn't there an NDA for seven million dollars out there, like double this one? I believe there is a very, very yeah. I don't, I don't remember yeah. what the what the most. I mean, it was the, the total was what was it was. I think it was nineteen million, seventeen to nineteen million. I think was the total that he's paid out in NDAs. And keep in mind, by the way, keep in mind, he only paid one million of this one. So yeah, he's he's paid out a lot of money, a lot of money over the years. Yeah, nineteen million. So uh, we're still talking another 18 million worth of stories out there. Yeah, it's uh, that's that's uh, that's something. Yeah, and it's two things. Uh, the I <laughs> I may have some of these details wrong, but uh, the the idea that uh, he agreed to an NDA and just decided not to pay it and thought everything would be okay. That that happened. That's part of this, right? Well, uh, what his his the the way I understand it is. He, they signed an NDA. He was going to pay her a million a year for, I think it was three years or whatever. Okay. So then the Wall Street Journal article came out, which was what originally resulted in him stepping down from WWE. And she was the focus of that article, her NDA. So apparently his thought was, well, she must have broken her NDA for the story to come out. I see. I will no longer pay her. I see. Which, by the way, which, by the way, you know, I don't know, that tells me, when I, when I hear that, it kind of tells me that, you know, some of these text messages about bragging to it to a dozen people, it kind of makes me think that he was full of shit in those text messages, because if you really were, like, bragging about this to all sorts of people, why would you presume that when the story broke, it had to be her, and not anybody else? I think that he was really trying to keep it on the down low, for the most part, and otherwise, it's like, you know, if you told all these people, like, anybody could have gone to the Wall Street Journal with that story. But he presumed it must have been her, and so he stopped paying. I see, I see. Well, the other part of this, then, is that uh, sometimes you will hear a great atrocity will be committed, and people will say, I never thought so-and-so would be involved in anything like this. So-and-so is the last person who would ever commit that kind of thing. Um, if there's one person who's going to do this, it sounds like Vincent Kennedy McMahon. Yeah, yeah. This is this he would is all, be low on that list of people you can't imagine doing something like this. Like, like as as horrific and unimaginable as it is, if it was going to be somebody, it would have been Vince. I mean, he's hidden in plain sight for years. You think back to the '90s and the noughties and all the stuff he was doing. I mean, it, it, he's hidden in plain sight, which these guys all often do, and it often comes out that that's what it is. I mean, he is a, he's just a reprehensible human being, if we can even call him that at this point, and. I hope after this that he disappears and is never seen again. I just want him to go to his penthouse, stay there, 
just 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 leave and um i want to see the only time i want to see him is if, is if he's in handcuffs and answering for this i wanted to ask actually isn't wasn't there a grand jury because they was there were subpoenas last year weren't there and wasn't his phone subpoenaed and some of his records i don't recall i mean mm. it's it's possible i don't i don't remember but eddie has a question for you ah and that is, well, do you think we will ever see Brock Lesnar again? Because Brock Lesnar was, uh, I mean, we, I say presumably, but I mean, there's no other options. The former UFC heavyweight champion that uh, yeah. was mentioned in the lawsuit. And, you know, he, you know, Vince tried to offer, I mean, I won't go into all the details, but no. the, the the gist of it is, for various reasons, snowstorm, etc., I don't think they ever actually met. But there was the intent to do so. And do you think we'll ever see Brock Lesnar again? I think this is one of those where to give an absolute answer, there would need to be more investigation based on and just basing this on Vince's text. Let's just do this just based on Vince's text. Vince says that he showed if it's Brock, Brock, which we're pretty sure it is Brock, certain photographs, certain things about this woman and then offered her up. Um, and then she says that she sent a video to Brock and they were supposed to meet. Um, if just going on that text message alone, the fact that he has shown Brock those pictures, I don't know how you ever bring Brock back because at that point, Brock is one of those people who was powerful enough to do something about this. He's one of the people I would put in that upper echelon of people that could have done something, could have said something. Sure. If I'm at work and my boss comes to me with naked pictures of a coworker, I'm going to HR or I'm going to the press or I'm going to somewhere, I'm going to the police. I'm going somewhere with that information. I'm not just sitting on that and going, oh yeah, that's absolutely fine. Um, this was someone who Vince was employing and he showed his his boss showed him pictures of that co-worker there's no way there's no way back from that there's no way that brock comes out of that well he is not somebody who was in a situation where he had to fear for his job his livelihood and everything else he should have done something i don't see how brock lesnar comes back on our televisions ever again and you know if it comes out that he was aware of what was going on and he was party to it he would be someone i would hope to see charges against Matthew here says, yes, Vince was served with a subpoena last August. Happened right before the TKO deal closed. Came out in an SEC filing. So there was a subpoena. So August, I mean, I don't know. I, I know a little about your legal system. I, I mean, I part of my job, I write crime dramas. So I do read... Federal lots. grand jury. Oh, yeah. So I do read a lot of American crime reports. And I read a lot of court documents. I did read, I read this one twice once because I was so shocked I didn't take it in and the second one to take it in. I do read a lot of court documents. I'm not, I'm quite fuzzy on how long it takes from a grand jury filing to actually deciding whether to press charges, but I think it can be, it can be a while. I think, yeah, it can be a long, it can together. be quite a while. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So we don't know what's happening there. That could be something that's coming down the line. And an unrelated, well, it's related, but it's certainly not as important as everything else. But we were talking yesterday about Brock. He was supposed to be in the Rumble. And he, his spot was given to Braun Breaker. And so everything that you saw with Braun Breaker was what they were going to do with Brock. And the Pat McAfee deal, apparently Brock was going to be the only guy in the ring. I don't know what was going to happen, but McAfee was going to get in. Or maybe he was going to be the only guy standing. Everybody else would be down or whatever. Mm. But McAfee was supposed to get in the ring, see Brock. It was going to be him and Brock alone. And he was going to be like, I'm out of here and step out and leave. So that was going to be that spot. And then, yes, Dominic was going to eliminate Brock Lesnar. Oh, wow. And they were going to, I believe, have a match. Uh, I think it was going to be Lesnar and Dominic in uh, Australia, which, of course, you know, Dominic would be destroyed. And then uh, Brock and Gunther at Mania. Mania. Yeah. So that was that was what was going to happen, but ain't happening now. It's looking like that's it. I mean, it actually that. shows a little bit of self-awareness that they pulled him. Oh, I because think... in the past, they haven't pulled people, have they? They've just let them come out. I mean, it, it shows less awareness that they had Hogan on, but it does show some awareness, at least, that they, they knew to pull him. They knew it was a bad idea. Hey, guys, did you love this clip? 
If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show, all of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.